Welcome back to the free CAD Made Easy series. Back in part one, we poked around the interface, launched a project, and explored some sample models, basically free CAD's tutorial level. Then in part two, we leveled up by sketching a basic 2D shape, a square with a circle inside, locking it down with constraints and padding it into a solid block, the equivalent of crafting our first building block. Now in part three, we'll take that block and carve into it with the pocket tool. Think of it like grabbing a digital lightsaber, or maybe a laser engraver, and slicing precise holes. It's like digital sculpting, but with precision and an undo button. Coming up in part four, we'll crank up the power-ups with transformation tools, copy, mirror, and pattern features that let designs multiply like tribbles. By this point, you should start to feel more comfortable, less intimidated, and the workflow more second nature. The tools that once looked overwhelming are now familiar, and each new feature builds on the last, like leveling up in a game. So fire up FreeCAD, make sure Sketcher is ready to roll, and if this is your kind of nerdy fun, tap like and subscribe to keep the good stuff coming. Let's start sketching. Start by opening the project created in part two. The solid block is like your starter deer. It may look plain, but it is the foundation for stronger builds ahead. You can load it from the start page or the file menu. Either way, the quest begins. With the project open, FreeCAD lands in the Pot Design Workbench. Think of it as your home base. To start the new sketch, select the top face of the block. This ensures the pocket tool has solid material to carve into. Create the new sketch by clicking the sketch tool in the Part Design ribbon. Since the face is already selected, FreeCAD drops you straight into sketch mode. We are now in the Sketcher workbench, the drawing board where flat 2D shapes begin, ready to be lifted into 3D. The toolbar ribbon has already been in action when shapes were sketched out. It sits right at the top, divided between geometry creation on one side and constraint controls on the other. Inside Sketcher, the task tab steps into the spotlight on the left panel, providing direct access to parameters, constraints, and solver messages. At the very top of the task tab, the parameters box sometimes appears. It shows up when certain geometry is selected. For example, a line displays its length, a circle its radius, or an arc its sweep. And it allows precise values to be typed in instead of only dragging things around. Next comes the solver area, which works like a warning light. It tells you when the sketch is under or over constrained. Below that are two handy panels, constraints and elements. Constraints are the rules of the game, making sure the sketch behaves. Elements are the players on the field, lines, arcs, and circles all waiting to be shaped. Together, they turn the sketch into a well-organized match where every move is tracked. Each new piece of geometry adds to the degrees of freedom, meaning how much movement or adjustment is still possible. Why does this matter? because a sketch with leftover freedom can shift around unexpectedly. Constraints lock things in place so the design stays stable. Altogether, the task tab works like a cockpit while sketching. Parameters, solver messages, and constraints are all right there to guide the process. To the left of the task tab sits the model view showing the project tree. Every body, feature, and sketch stacked in order. It appears in most other workbenches too, serving as a true home base for navigating the whole design rather than just editing a single sketch. While Sketcher focuses on the sketch at hand, the tree view reveals the big picture, a project-wide map that shows how all the pieces fit together. Think of it as a compass when exploring a growing design. Once the task tab and the tree view start working together, they feel like a tag team. The task tab provides the nuts and bolts controls for the sketch being edited, while the tree view shows exactly where that sketch sits in the bigger design. Together, they prevent getting lost, zooming into details without losing sight of the project. For example, a sketch might be edited in the task tab, while the tree view toggles visibility of other sketches or features, making the sketch easier to work with. Now that the lay of the land is clear, it's time to follow that map into action. The next sketch will drive the pocket cut. 
Use the external geometry tool to identify the bottom edge of the attached block. This anchors the new sketch to existing geometry so it stays connected to the base. That edge now shows up as a purple lifeline. If the block changes, the hole follows along, keeping the design consistent and reliable. Be cautious though. Leaning too hard on these references can be risky, like stacking Jenga blocks. If the base gets pulled out or reshaped, the whole tower may come tumbling down, forcing you to rebuild. These links are only guides. They do not lock the sketch in place, and the degrees of freedom remain unchanged. Next, use construction geometry to set up a grid that will guide the circle's position. Construction lines do not become part of the solid. They are like scaffolding, giving you reference points without cluttering the final model. Each construction line also adds to the sketch's degrees of freedom. The more lines you add, the more the sketch can move around until you lock things down with constraints. So the solver panel may show a higher count before you fully constrain it. With the grid in place, add a circle where the hole will go. Click once to set its center, then again to set the radius. At this stage, it is free floating. The grid will take over in the next steps to pin it down precisely. Now we are ready to apply constraints to lock everything into place, snapping everything into position like Lego bricks clicking together. Let's start by adding a symmetry constraint. First, center the left construction line between the origin and the top point of the right construction line. Then. Add another symmetry constraint to lock the circle right in the middle of the grid. The symmetry tool is one of the most powerful in the Sketcher workbench. It lines things up perfectly between two references, keeping your sketch balanced and cutting down on extra constraints. In practice, that means you can align a point or an edge evenly between two points. It feels like snapping objects into place with invisible magnets. Fast, precise, and very satisfying. Just don't overdo it. Each symmetry creates hidden dependencies, and if one reference shifts, the whole sketch can collapse like a house of cards. Now that we know what symmetry does, let's look at how to use it correctly. The symmetry tool can be a little tricky. When centering the left construction line, the selection order doesn't matter. However, when centering a point between two other points, FreeCAD requires the center point to be selected last. Otherwise, it may misinterpret the intent and center the wrong point. For example, if you click one reference point first, then the circle's center, and finally the second reference point, the circle won't center as expected. Instead, FreeCAD will center the last reference point, leaving the circle's origin off to the side, like setting waypoints on a map, but ending up parked halfway between two rest stops instead of at the real destination. The correct way is to click one reference point first, then the other reference point, and finally the circle's center. Saving the center for last lets FreeCAD finally get the hint, and the circle snaps neatly into place, like locking in the last piece of a puzzle with a satisfying click. While selection order is critical in some cases, FreeCAD also lends a hand by automatically applying certain constraints. These not only position the geometry neatly, but can also flag redundant constraints. Removing them is optional. The sketch will still work, but clearing them out helps keep things clean, efficient, and easier to edit, while bringing the design closer to being fully locked down. FreeCAD even offers a checkbox in the preferences that lets you decide whether redundant constraints should be removed automatically or simply flagged with a warning. This gives you control over how tidy you want your sketch to be. For example, when creating the construction line to center our hole, a symmetry constraint may be added automatically. If you then manually add a second symmetry constraint to the same line, the solver will recognize the duplication as redundant and either remove it or alert you depending on your settings. Only one degree of freedom remains, the circle size. This is the final piece before the sketch is complete, making the hole ready to cut. Apply a dimension constraint to give it a fixed value. With this, the sketch becomes completely locked down, stable, predictable, and ready for action. 
As referenced in part two of this series, the dimension constraints have been simplified, merged into a single tool, with FreeCAD being smart enough to determine the desired constraint. Set the size by first clicking on the dimension constraint, then the circle. Finally, enter the value in the constraint dialog box that appears. With the sketch now fully constrained, let's clear some breathing room in the workspace. Right now, the solid block is still hogging the spotlight, which can make the sketch look a bit cluttered. In the model tree, every feature has a little eye icon. Clicking it will toggle visibility on or off in the 3D view. These changes are local to the current workbench. So when you close the sketch, the block will pop back into view automatically. This trick is super handy. Once your design gets more complex, hide the old stuff so the new work takes center stage. When you're ready, click the eye again and the block makes its comeback. The visibility toggle works from any workbench where the model tree is available, making it a universal backstage pass for keeping things tidy. Heads up! In FreeCAD version 1.0.0, there's a quirky bug in the Sketcher workbench where the sketch visibility doesn't always listen. If that happens, just close the sketch and reopen it, like giving the software a quick nudge to behave. With the sketch already closed, we're now in the Part Design workbench. Select a sketch in the Model tree and click the Pocket tool to cut the hole. This opens the pocket parameters, which offer several ways to control how deep the cut goes. Dimension cuts to a single fixed depth, a precise command to dig exactly this far and stop. Simple and predictable, though the pocket won't adapt if the model changes later. Through all cuts straight through the entire model, no matter how thick it is, a lightsaber move that doesn't quit until it's out the other side. Quick and flashy on simple blocks, but risky in bigger builds since it won't stop for anything. Two first stops as soon as it meets the first solid face. Think of this as safe mode. Perfect for the block in this demo, since the cut naturally ends at the opposite side without overshooting. Up to face targets a specific surface and stops there, pointing at a wall and telling the laser, halt here. Great for precision work, though it needs a clear surface to reference. Two dimensions extends the cut in both directions from the sketch plane, each with its own value. Think of a drill bit that works both upward and downward at the same time. Perfect when different depths are needed above and below the sketch. Up to shape continues until it meets a chosen shape. FreeCAD playing a game of 3D connect the dots. Powerful for advanced builds, but tricky if the reference geometry shifts. For this demo, stick with two first, so the cut goes cleanly through until it hits the opposite side of the block. With the pocket cut complete, step back and check it out. The block now has a clean round hole running straight through. Mission accomplished. In the model tree, a shiny new pocket feature shows up under the body. Every cut, pad, or sketch gets added here stacking up like levels in a save file. Each feature is parametric, meaning nothing is locked in stone. Double click a sketch or pocket and it springs back to life for edits. Change dimensions, swap parameters, or dial in a different depth. Think of the model tree as your personal time machine. Every move is saved and you can jump back to fix mistakes or try new ideas without losing progress. This flexibility is the superpower of parametric modeling. Instead of rebuilding from scratch, a few clicks can reshape the whole design. This concludes this tutorial. You've now used the two core tools of part design, pad to add material and pocket to remove it. These tools are the bread and butter of solid modeling. Everything else builds on this push and pull of adding and subtracting. Think of it as digital sculpting with rules. Pad lays down clay, pocket carves it away, and constraints keep everything precise. It's less messy than real clay, and you get an undo button instead of sticky fingers. Coming up next, we'll expand beyond the basics. Part 4 introduces transformation tools, copying, mirroring, and patterning features so designs can multiply and evolve. We'll also unlock formulas, variables, and the spreadsheet workbench, giving dimensions a brain so models can adapt automatically. 
That's when designs start to feel alive, almost cloning themselves, sci-fi style, while still staying under your control. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing to Nerding Out with Nevin for the rest of the FreeCAD Made Easy series, along with plenty of other nerdy projects.